Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, for one night only, 10 Democratic presidential hopefuls will share the stage in Houston. Here's a look at the debate venue at Texas Southern University. Candidates did a walkthrough earlier today. Ten of them met the polling and donor requirements for the debate. And for the first time, former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren will share the stage. As the two highest polling contenders in recent weeks, they will also take center stage. Let's bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. She is at the debate site in Houston. Caitlin, great to see you. Set the stage for us. What are you hearing from the candidates and their campaigns about their strategies and expectations for tonight? Well, I think two things separate this debate from the ones that we've had previously. First, you mentioned this is the first time that Elizabeth Warren and uh, Vice, former Vice President Joe Biden will be on the same stage at the same time showing kind of competing visions for the future of the party. The other difference is that we have a somewhat of a narrowed field. This is only a one night debate. Only 10 candidates have made that threshold to get onto the debate stage. And this comes at a time that voters are coming back from their summer vacations. They're back in uh, school mode and perhaps paying a little bit more attention to this process, which allows some of these candidates who may be pulling lower down in the field to kind of reintroduce themselves or introduce themselves to a lot of these voters. And of course, Texas is the backdrop for today. Two Texans uh, in this race I expect that to uh, be an issue uh, that is discussed in this debate stage. You spoke, Caitlin, with the executive director of the Texas Democratic Party, Manny Garcia, earlier and asked about the importance of the state in this election. Let's listen to some of that. Texas is the biggest battleground state in the country, and tonight we're the center of the political universe. Of course, we love the spotlight on us. Um, and, you know, when you look at what Texas has to offer, there is absolutely no way to the White House if a Republican cannot win Texas. And the latest polling we've seen, 4742 University of Houston Univision poll just came out just two days ago. Democrats are up by five. Every single Democratic candidate is up on Donald Trump in Texas. Quinnipiac poll, just hours after that, the next day, we see 48 percent of Texans definitely will not vote for Donald Trump. So not just no, but hell no. And, you know, we're seeing this movement incredibly quickly. From 2016, for the first time in two decades, we had become a single-digit state. In 2018, we famously narrowed that gap to 2.5 points. Now we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth, a tremendous amount of excitement, and we're finally seeing the National Democratic Party respect Texas, respect our families, respect our voters. We're not just a battleground in the general election, we're a battleground in the primary. We're the second largest delegation. So these candidates are going to need Texas Democrats in order to become the nominee. Caitlin, do the candidates share that sentiment and how is that shaping their approaches? Yes, you've had several candidates coming to Texas even before this debate to campaign because they know the primary here is critical, especially since it's going earlier in the cycle than before uh, on Super Tuesday. It's a delegate-rich state, uh, the second largest delegates to the national convention. And Democrats are also focusing on areas like Houston, particularly Harris County, which saw turnout in 2018 double uh, from previous cycles. It's a very diverse area and some a place that's changing uh, pretty rapidly at least when it comes to demographics. You also talk to Democrats on the ground here in Texas, and they point to the uh, campaign of Beto O'Rourke in 2018, how he was able to uh, really build, help build out a party infrastructure and help uh, get a lot of people elected to state and local offices, even though he wasn't able to win. And on that note, we actually have Beto O'Rourke's campaign manager, Jen O'Malley Dillon, with us here. Um, Jen, we were just talking about the importance of Texas as a battleground state in 2020. But tell us what you think Democrats need to do here to win in the primary. Yeah, I mean, Texas is so important for Democrats. It's the path forward, I think, for the country. I think Texas really represents the type of demographics, young, old, every diversity you can imagine here. And what we saw in 2018 is that the path forward here is that Democrats can win. Beto O'Rourke was able to win more votes than any Democrat, not just Democrats, but independents and Republicans. And doing that, talking about progressive issues. And so I think this idea that Texas isn't in play um, or it's not in play in the general election it is not true. We believe it firmly is in play and we think Beto is the best candidate to put it in play in those 38 electoral votes in the general election. And you said by talking about progressive issues, 
Does that mean that, um, you know, Beto O'Rourke has been talking a lot about the issue of guns. Uh, he has talked about a federal buyback program. Um, any concern that that might turn away some voters in Texas? Or is that kind of the path forward? No, no concern at all. I mean, Beto was talking about impeachment two years ago in Texas. You know, he traveled across the state. Obviously, something incredibly horrible happened in El Paso. And Beto spoke to not just the victims and the families, but also gun owners and had a real conversation before he rolled out his policy that we can't afford just to take assault weapons off the streets in the future. We actually have to do it today, and we can do it today. And so I think that the people of Texas, just like the people of this country, they're looking for bold leadership. They're looking for honesty. They're looking for someone that's not politics as usual, but is willing to lead us forward in the critical issues that we're facing. And, and that's the feedback we get, whether we're in Texas or Iowa or New Hampshire or any other parts of the country. And we expect the issue of guns to come up tonight, given those horrific shootings. Uh, you all have been been on the campaign trail talking about this issue a lot, but are Democrats doing enough to make this kind of a driving issue for voters the way that it has been for Republicans? You know what? I think we've seen how important this issue is, you know, not just because of this primary, but March for Our Lives, you know tragedy after tragedy, not just big tragedies like what happened in El Paso, shootings every day in places like Chicago. And I think that Democrats, independents, all voters are looking for their leaders to stand up on this. For us, we believe this is a critical issue. We don't have to wait until Donald Trump is defeated. We can actually do something about it now. That's what Beto's out there talking about. He's going to continue to really push this issue, uh, you know, everywhere he goes, wherever he's going. And just quickly, as we're wrapping up here, what does uh, O'Rourke have to do tonight in this debate? What is the goal? You know what? He's so ready for tonight. He's really excited about it. Our goal is the same as it's been every day, to continue to show direct, honest leadership. He's going to show how we have to take it to Trump. He's going to show that politics as usual is not enough to tackle the challenges we have. I think you're going to see the same guy you see out there every day. And he's going to introduce himself to the American voters, many of which don't know him yet. And tonight's a great opportunity for that. Great.